Welcome back, and let's take a quick look at the crypto market where we have Bitcoin trading at about just over $20,200, and uh, we can see it's up about, or down 3.5% over the trailing 24 hours. Ethereum up just slightly, Cardano down 3.5%, and Bitcoin among the assets plunging on yesterday's upside inflation readings. We all remember that one as a correlation with stock continues. The move suggests the crypto winter isn't quite over yet, so is Bitcoin longer the contrarian investment that it once was? Joining us now, Ed Moya, Oanda Senior Market Analyst, and thank you for joining us here today. So what's the scoop on what we should expect with Bitcoin prices? As we know, they have been following other risk assets quite closely. Uh, very much so. Right now, Bitcoin, it still looks like it's the ultimate risky asset. You're seeing a high correlation with what we're, what's happening on Wall Street. And you're probably going to see that's going to continue. So that means everything about inflation, everything about the Fed is going to you know, dictate whether or not uh, Bitcoin breaks or if it continues to stabilize here. And, and right now, I think investors are rather fearful that there's no certainty as far as you know how aggressive the Fed will be. And uh, we're going to pay close attention to the messaging over the next several weeks. And that's probably going to keep Bitcoin somewhat in a range. But if we do have markets starting to price in a severe recession for the U.S., then you know, Bitcoin is going to retest those lows and possibly break them. Yeah, and I think we could, we could interchange the word stocks with crypto in just about any markets discussion we're having today. But I want to talk to you about something uh, that is particular to the Ethereum market. That is the big merger that's underway. And can you just give us a status update, how that's going, how that may or may not be impacting crypto prices? I think it's very positive for the crypto space that you're having a key fundamental story that is showing the, the space is evolving. Uh, it's going to be less energy intensive, and you're probably going to see that th this should go fairly smoothly, I think. They've tested it. There's expectations that this will be successful. And I think for Ethereum, this is really going to raise that argument that we could have the flippening in possibly a couple years. I think there's, there's Ethereum is leading the blockchain race right now. And I think this will put it in a position where contracts could become a little bit more affordable. And you could see that more companies will become more interested in their particular blockchain. And this is a, a long-term opportunity. I think this is one of the starting steps that will attract more investors. But it's... The, there's still a lot of work to be done. Yes, a lot of work to be done. And some of that work is being done on the regulatory front, uh, sometimes, a lot of times, to the concert, consternation of some of the crypto players involved. Gary Gensler, a somewhat controversial figure at the head of the SEC. Just wondering for any, any updates you have on that front, um, because we've seen the institutional adoption, but the SEC has been very slow to kind of formalize everything. And they're probably going to remain slow. I think that we're not looking at any major overhauls as far as um, what's going to impact the crypto space. I think regulation, yes. Are some stable coins going to um, come under greater scrutiny? And will that provide you know, more negative tones for the entire cryptoverse? Yes, that's probably going to be the case. But I think right now, you know, the, the top coins, Ethereum, Bitcoin, they're probably going to survive this regulatory gauntlet that's going to be unveiled over this, the next several years. I think this is not something that's going to be quickly... Um, reached and i think you know you're you're going to probably see there's a coordination with the fed and you know with the the progress on the digital dollar is years away so i think you know this regulatory question mark is is going to remain in place for quite some time Yes, and we got time for one more here, and this has to do with Bitcoin mining. Now, just to set up for our readers, Bitcoin, uh, way back in 2017, late in the year, had a high of 20,000, and it has tested that, that uh, what is now support level, kind of roughly, and there is concern that if it drops too much, that there may be kind of a snowball effect. One of the things that affect this is the profitability of miners that are actually processing all the, con uh, all the contracts to clear um, you know, those transactions. But if mining uh, incentives are reduced or if there's not as much incentive for them, well, the hash rate can uh, be a problem there. Maybe you can give us some clarity on this. Yeah, very much. That's a big concern. And that's one of the, the some of the more recent drivers for some of this weakness. I think miners have been having a lot of trouble. You're seeing a lot more uh, fears that we're going to have a lot more insolvencies across several crypto companies. And I think that... Um, this is a you know a, a key moment for for Bitcoin. I mean you know we're at sixty nine thousand almost uh, just over a year yes. uh, since November, and now I, you're probably going to see that you know people are adopting. I think these miners, the, everyone knows they need to adapt with the time. So I think you're seeing they're going to focus on different projects. So I think it is a concern, but I think most of that has been priced in. I think the miners have they've seen the writing on the wall, so I think they're they're well prepared for this right now. 
Well, seems like everything, as it usually does, comes back to the Fed. So we'll be uh, pinned to our seats uh, next week. Always great to see you. Edward Moya Oenda, Senior Market Analyst. Thank you once again.